Hello and welcome to the outskirts of Moscow, Russia for the 8th round of 25 in this year's TM Master Cup Series Tour. Dan Mullen is out with a familial commitment, so you're stuck with me this week. This is a 3.58 mile temporary course around the Vinukovo International Airport, which is one of the four major airports serving Moscow. The series has raced here, raced here since 2011. They started on the short course, which was uh, kind of crashy with a lot of twisty bits. And then they moved to the long course in 2013, which has been seen as a major improvement by teams and drivers. It's less bumpy than the short course, but uh, there's only so much you can do with an airport. There's a lot of good opportunities to pass going into the hairpins here, and it's a faster course overall, so we're excited to see how this is going to go. Saul Fischl qualified on the pole drivers, with uh, Liv Eklund car. alongside. That's going to be very interesting. Hometown hero, Yevgeny Kuznetsov starting in row two alongside Ingrid Hadeland right behind her teammate Liv Eklund. And uh, Adrian Devereaux there in row three, having a great week so far. And we've got Joe Lenick back there as well. Uh, Arto Kekin and Marco Diaz Castaneda, the Richter teammates, starting alongside each other. Chris Davenport, Drivers, David Krikori in there. Kurt Pliskin and Tony Durbin qualifies pretty well up in 12th place, getting some setup help from Yevgeny Kuznetsov, we've heard. Apo Anselmi gets a promoter's option after his stellar Cariella run. Selda Ashby there. Brandon LaRoe, Josh Marshall, first of the independents. Ryan Matthews and Timothy Ruiz there in row nine. Great qualifying effort by him. And same thing with John Dilks there. Up in 19th place, Alessandro Rossini, been uh, struggling all week, hasn't really had the momentum he was looking for. Vijay Pushanda there, uh, starting 22nd, first of the Rus Autosport cars. As we go further back through the field, Dan Lecklater puts that car up in 27th place, a good run for the Tenere Motorsports team. And uh, Craig Janser out qualifies uh, his teammate once again. Scott Bates has been struggling this week, and so has Ben Atkins. Uh, Fernando Costa qualifies decently well there in the 154 car, and Boris Tolmanov becomes the first driver from Moldova to compete in the TM Master car Series race. Carter Fitzgerald gets a promoter's option for Matthews Motorsports in their third car, as uh, Trek Tauger and Catherine Williams, uh, the other two independents, have been struggling mightily this week for pace, and... Uh, We've got a few cars back here. You usually see the two Tinos back this far, and uh, Ike Durbin's back there. The Togliatti's did set times in qualifying, but they were very far off the pace, and Cameron Taylor and Luciano Savaral failed to set flying laps uh, during the qualifying session. They had several mechanical issues in their, uh, in their uh, qualifying efforts. As Carter Fitzgerald, who uh, did get the promoter's option for Matthews Motorsports, uh, experiencing a mechanical failure on the start so she will not actually take the start here and uh, that's going to be a technically a did not start for that team meanwhile as carter fitzgerald pulls into the pits we have a race to run as saul fischl brings the field to the green flag gets a decent jump there on Liv eklund and yevgeny kuznetsov the favorite son of the hometown crowd here is going to try and follow fischl through tries to get alongside there Three wide behind there for second place, but Liv Eklund sorts that out. Kuznetsov, three wide for the lead. Eklund made a move on the inside, but that wasn't quite going to stick. But Kuznetsov up to second place, trying to follow Fischl here. He's going to make a move uh, to the right of Fischl, and he's going to get alongside. Crowd is starting to go crazy here as Kuznetsov alongside Saul Fischl, who uh, received a lot of boos, uh, probably the most boos out of everyone. Fischl slips. He's going to hit the curb there, and that's a bunch of damage to Fischl's car as Kuznetsov holds the lead, and the crowd is going insane right now. Fischl, that's a decent amount of damage. He's dropping back. Back to fourth now, back to fifth place as Kekkonen tries to make a move, but he's going to try and hold him off there. Kekkonen's going to get by and drop him back to fifth as Yevgeny Kuznetsov leads in front of the hometown crowd. And uh, that's not going to last for very long as Ingrid Hadeland's going to slip by and put Kuznetsov back to second, but still, best run of the season so far for Kuznetsov, and we're only three-fourths of the lap in. Uh, Kuznetsov's come very close to winning. He does not have any wins in the Master Cup Series at this point, but he's come very close several times, but Hadeland looks to pull away here after a dominating Karyala performance. Apo Anselmi got the promoter's option in the, uh, I believe this is the Sylvan Racing car for his Karyala performance. And uh, he's doing pretty well here today. He's running up uh, in the points, doing battle with Chris Downport just outside the top 10. 
Actually, I believe he is in the top 10 at this point, but uh, he's going to pull away from Chris Davenport there with Joe Lennick right behind him. And uh, here's Brandon LaRoe, who's having a pretty strong run as well. wonder if the consolation race was the best thing to happen to him, because uh, he's running up with Tony Durbin, who's having a... Uh, an unexpectedly strong performance, and uh, John Dilks right behind him is having a great run as well. Uh, looks like uh, that's going to be a battle for, I believe, 13th or 14th place between Dilks and Laroe. But Laroe having a very strong run to start this race after uh, a, a fantastic consolation performance by him. And uh, trying to make a move on Durbin there, and he's going to get him. So. Laroe powers right on by Tony Durbin there going into these uh, these chicanes on the backstretch. They put those there to break up and allow for passing, but Durbin and Dilks looks like they're both going to get by him again. Here's uh, Ike Durbin, who's made up quite a bunch of positions. He's already uh, up about 10 positions from the start of the race in the 7-11 car for Team Th Timothy. And, uh, oh, he's going to push left, and uh, unfortunately there's a car there, so uh, you're going to get turned into the wall. That was Boris Tolbanov in the 82, and uh, just really a silly mistake by Ike Durbin. He's had uh, some decent performances in that car. Oh, looked like the steering might have been off on that. Tulyadi actually came very close to DNQing this race. Uh, there's a 110% rule, and uh, they were just about uh, at that 110% mark. The drivers aren't really the issue with this team. Antonov is a very well-respected young rally driver, and Vitaly Karpenko, who we've seen a, f a few years now is a veteran with a lot of experience in these cars. Ingrid Hadeland uh, has pulled out a pretty decent gap on Kuznetsov. Oh, uh, looks like uh, looks like she's going to have to pit here with that right rear tire going down. Uh, she's going to have to come into the pits on lap number two. And uh, despite pulling away from Kuznetsov a few seconds, pulling away by a few seconds, uh, that's going to hand the lead over to Evgeny Kuznetsov. But it looks like. Uh, this, even though that uh, she's having to come into pits for this unscheduled pit stop, uh, she might be able to pull a strategy move and get back into the hunt. So all is not quite lost for Ingrid Hadeland. Brandon LaRoe doing battle with Lucas Grabert, who's had a pretty good showing so far this week. And Ryan Matthews, who uh, that Matthews team has uh, kind of experienced a fall back to earth. They haven't quite been showing the speed that they've been showing earlier in the year. Grabert hits the curb, the same curb that Saul Fischl hit. But LaRoe's going to hold on to 16th place as Grabert. That looks like that damage is going to affect him. Uh, the, the Grabert car, I uh, believe, is going to have a new paint scheme on that car uh, in the coming weeks. So that'll be interesting to see. But Brandon LaRoe still hanging on ahead of Ryan Matthews. That consolation race did him a lot of good. Tony Durbin... Uh, when, uh, when you think of a competent road racer, one of the last people you think of is Tony Durbin, but he's trying to prove us wrong here, doing battle with Apo and Selmy for 10th place. He's uh, looking a lot better than he uh, usually has on road courses, and he's been leaning a lot on uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov for setups, and uh, it, it's showing here. He's doing a phenomenal job by his standards, the ASCC champion, and uh, he might pull alongside on Selmy here coming out of that, uh, that chicane. He's going to do so. He's going to take 10th with uh, Kurt Pliskin following him. And uh, I think DK might try and sneak through there as well, which is going to put Anselmi back to, I believe, 13th place. John Dilk's hanging onto the back of that little group there. Excellent run by him so far. And uh, here's Packer Carroll, and uh, that's Dan Lechleiter running in 27th and 28th place. They've had pretty good weeks by their standards so far. And uh, they're both in the consolation race at Cariala, and that seems to have given them uh, the confidence that they need to run quite a bit better. This is the first race for the Ultor livery on that Packer Carroll car, and uh, he's trying to get them a good run here today. As uh, Saul Fischl is now falling back to 7th place, and uh, Joe Lennick, who's been very reliable and fast in this 23 car and has done everything but win, is uh, going to try and take that position from him. Uh, but Saul Fischl, uh, I mentioned before that he uh, got a lot of boos. He got uh, probably the, the most boos we've ever heard uh, in a race weekend so far this year uh, here. Uh, not sure if that's uh, tied to uh, some of the statements that he's made uh, regarding the flag that he uses or 
uh, anything like that. But Joe Lennox going to take the position from Fischl, who looks to be struggling for straight line speed after that damage uh, that he took from hitting the curb. Uh, not sure if there's any underlying suspension issues or such uh, with that Fischl car. He hasn't reported anything on the radio, but he's going to give Lennox a bump there. Uh, but Lennox isn't going to move out of the way, and he's going to hold on to the position. Uh, and should be able to pull away from Fischl on uh, some of the long straights. Here's Josh Marshall in Down Under Motorsports. We've seen this team uh, for the past few years so show up to Indianapolis and uh, several other tracks. Uh, they've done the Independence Trophy before, if I'm not mistaken. But he's currently up in 21st place, having a strong run for himself, right behind Lucas Grabert, and almost in the points. So Josh Marshall having a pretty strong run for himself. He's the best in the independence right now. Luciano Savarol has not moved much from uh, the last row. He's only up to 37th place. And uh, understandably, people his, uh, his crew is concerned about why he's not moving up. Cameron Taylor's already advanced uh, about 15 positions. And Savarol is stuck with the likes of, I believe that's Trek Tauger right in front of him. And uh, he's just really struggled to clear some of these uh, some of these slower cars, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a great day for Savarol back there. Speaking of Cameron Taylor, he's up to 26 now. Now that he's got around VJ Pouchand in the 80, and uh, Dan Lecklater is up to 25th place in that 10 car. That's a a very strong performance for that 10. But uh, Cameron Taylor in the Lennard car, I, was, I think he's he might be able to get him here. Oh. no. Maybe, yeah, I think he's going to pull alongside here, and uh, the Ohio driver passing the Ohio-based team, and he's going to get him there. As uh, Here's Fernando Costa, who I think a lot of people forgot that this car existed, uh, because his Independence Trophy campaign has been nothing but a disaster. Uh, he's up to 23rd place now, and uh, I believe this is the most camera time that this car has gotten. Uh, all season and uh, understandably so because he's been absolutely nowhere and now he's uh, kind of getting somewhere so uh, we'll keep an eye on this car he's made some gains throughout the day and uh, there's Cameron Taylor who's been flying through the field he's gonna drop back to 24th Costa is uh, but Costa punching way above his weight here today I don't think this car has been uh, higher than about 30th in any of the other races that he's been in so uh, Earning his TV time finally in this uh, 154 car. Cameron Taylor going to make a move on the outside there. I don't know if he's going to be able to get him just yet. Yeah, I think he will. He's going to power by there. And uh, he's right behind Josh Marshall. Uh, Marshall's just a couple tenths in front. And he's going to get back Cameron Taylor there. So uh, Independence holding their own. So here's Vitelli Karpenko. And uh, Ingrid Hedeland has pit already. So uh, that's not a great sign as you can see Hedlund uh, disappear into the distance from Vitaly Karpenko. Uh, these cars are way down on power. They're about five seconds off the pace the Tulliatis are and uh, it's uh, not been great. So here's uh, Arto Kekkonen who has closed the gap on Kuznetsov who's held it pretty much uncontested thus far. Uh, Arto nearly won France if uh, it wasn't for a few miscues and uh, he could have scored a lot of points at Cariallo but the car broke, and he also broke down at Road Atlanta, so there's a lot of points that Kekkonen and his team have left on the table so far this year. Uh, but it looks like Kuznetsov's going to pull away there. Here's David Krikorian, who uh, was uh, a bit disappointed to qualify as low as 10th, which should say uh, how strong his season's been. Uh, he's had a few early season DNFs, uh, but uh, he got that win at France, and uh, if it wasn't for getting punted at Karyal in the car breaking at Sweden. He might be leading the championship right now as he's doing battle with Saul Fischl who, um, knowing how Russia's fans are, DK actually didn't get booed while Saul Fischl did so that says a lot about uh, uh, their opinion of Saul Fischl so uh, looks like DK is going to make the move there in the chicane still alongside Fischl and oh, he ran that a bit uh, awkwardly and uh, looks like Durbin's going to get around him there so uh, here's John Dilks up in 12th place, which is a huge effort for Team Timothy. Uh, they've, their season's not been great, although I believe they still are using uh, last year's Gesslers. Although Dilks did qualify 
uh, for Cargella pretty easily. So uh, I guess that's a testament to uh, Dilks's uh, efforts in this car and uh, what he's been able to do. Here's Richard Scott, who uh, Luciano finally got around Trek Tauger. It's taken him uh, six laps to get this far. Uh, this, this is lap six of tw or seven of 28. And oh, uh, Richard Scott, I don't think that car is handling too well as uh, still side by side and he is just not laying over for Savarol. He drives off the track, kicks up some dust, but he's still in front of Savarol. He doesn't care. Richard Scott uh, has one more race scheduled in this car. I believe he's going to be in this car for the round of England. And then uh, going to be turning it over once we get back to the States to uh, Kenny Myatt, who's been running in the uh, in the light series for uh, Tenere Motorsports. So going to be interesting to see that. Uh, speaking of Tenere Motorsports, Dan Lechleiter, who's the team car to the 70, is the first car to pull off into the pits at the end of lap 7. This is a 28 lap race, as I mentioned before. So his fuel economy is not looking terribly great right now. And now we bounce from one Ohio team to another as uh, Hastert Racing and Timothy Ruiz are running up in 22nd place right behind Josh Marshall and in front of Scott Bates as, uh, oh, that car is slowing on track. That's a mechanical failure for the 33 car. Uh, an unfortunate end to the day. Uh, for Timothy Ruiz, who is looking to punch above his weight yet again. And uh, that's a slightly more spectacular mechanical failure from Bruce Autosport and VJ Pushanda, who, uh, uh, that's one of their two cars out today. Here's Liv Eklund up to third place in the, uh, in the 11 car, uh, lap 8, and uh, I believe she's uh, getting the call to come into the pits. And yes, she is. So Liv Eklund is uh, the first of the front runners to come into the pits. Uh, lap 8 of 28, and we're going to see if there's any takers. Looks like that's, uh, I believe that's Chris Davenport, and there's Tony Durbin coming in behind. Richard Scott still struggling with uh, with the handling of that car, and Trek Tauger's going to drift to the left and just spin him out. That's a little rude, don't you think? As uh, Richard Scott drives away, he's only going to lose a couple positions and uh, fall back uh, right in front of uh, the 42 car. And, oh, looks like uh, Liv Eklund slid through, her st uh, slid through her stall. So, uh, tough break for Eklund. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's an appropriate time penalty for Trek Tiger. And Kuznetsov's going to come into the pits on lap 9. And I believe lead pretty much the rest of the field, as you see there. Uh, Kekkonen's coming into the pits. Devereaux. I believe that's Kostyneta back there. Alenixin. And uh, Kuznetsov right in front of Kekkonen, going to see how they cycle out. As here comes Kuznetsov. Uh, there he is. He, he, his pit crew did a great job. That's a, that's a much bigger gap than he came into the pits with. There's Kekkonen. Uh, I believe that's Devereaux. Uh, Kostyneta. And there's where Hadalan cycles around. Uh, Olenek, Krikorian, and Dilks. Dilks, excellent pit stop by Dilks. There's... Uh, Pliskin, Durbin, Ashby, as uh, the rest of the field cycles by. Looks like uh, Packer Carroll's having a pretty decent run, and Costa's still up there. I uh, believe Webster jumped over Janser. Yeah, he did. And uh, looking further back, we had car kicking up smoke. I believe that was Ian Cooper twice now in that, uh, in that uh, sequence there as the rest of the field cycles by. Uh, Eklund dropped way back after sliding through her stall. And uh, Ingrid Hadeland cycled around to about 12th place, but since she's off cycle, she's going to pull into the pits and surrender 12th. Uh, here's Alessandro Rossini, who's up to 17th place. He has not had a fantastic weekend. And that's a bit of a rude maneuver from Apo Anselmi, who just puts Rossini into the wall. Uh, Really no regard for breaking zones by uh, Anselmi. And I don't think uh, Anselmi's reign of terror is over because we're on board Zelda Ashby. Anselmi slides off into the grass and got a time penalty. And hits the wall, shoots across, nearly hits Ashby. And what on earth are you doing, Anselmi? That's a little, uh, that's a little ridiculous. But... Uh, Zelda Ashby running right behind. That's not for position anymore, but I think she just wants to uh, get around Anselmi and uh, 
away from the terror that uh, he's been causing for the last lap, understandably so. And uh, Ashby is going to make it around. And, uh, Ashby in 14th place, having a pretty strong run for herself up in the points. Uh, Luciano Savarol is still only in 29th place after all that's been going on. Still running behind Richard Scott, who's uh, got all that rear end damage. And uh, let's see if uh, Scott's going to continue to hold off Savarol as uh, Richard Scott in the Team Thunder half of uh, Tenere Motorsports. Uh, Tenere Motorsports is actually going to be merging operations uh, once we get back to the States. So Lechlader Motorsports, Team Thunder are all going to be under one roof. Uh, at least their Master Cup operations are. And Savaral is going to go up in smoke. So uh, he may have been having engine issues this entire time. Uh, we're not entirely sure, but he did report that nothing was wrong at the start of the race. So this could have been a relatively recent development with Savaral. Uh, Vitelli Karpenko running about four seconds off the pace. Nobody around him. And uh, let's see what he's uh, do Oh, that's looking a bit squirrely, and he's going to slide off. Uh, surprisingly, that's the first off-track incident for either of the Toliatis. Those cars have been ill-handling and underpowered, which is uh, not a very good mix to have at a high-speed track like this. Here's Boris Tolmanov running in 26th place right behind Richard Scott. He's the first Moldovan to compete in the TM Master Cup Series. He's a TM Europe regular this year running for Rus Autosport, who is just down to TM Europe in some select uh, Master Cup appearances. The TM Lights and FARC operations split away to become Rus Autosport America at the start of the year, which is owned by uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov and Lev Vladimirovich Polzin, who some of you might remember. Uh, the American operations were expected to show up at uh, Carbondale, but their car wasn't ready. We might be seeing them at Indianapolis, but uh, the European operation is looking a little strapped for cash. They had to bring on Vijay Pushanda to fund this car, and when your uh, team owner is running for a Duma seat and spending a lot of his money on that uh, oligarch, you, you know, you're going to expect to see pay drivers. So forgot to mention, John Dilks got booed pretty heavily in driver intros. Uh, as it turns out, uh, he had some choice words to say about Yevgeny Kuznetsov after uh, Kuznetsov spun him out at Karyala. Kuznetsov apologized. He said it was no big deal, just a simple mistake. But John Dilks decided to take it personally and overreact and uh, said that if the officials weren't going to penalize him, he'd punch him in the throat and break his windpipe, which, classic John Dilks overreaction, I know. Uh, Kuznetsov isn't bothered by it too much. Uh, he seemed to be in high spirits, but Dilks... Uh, really just uh yeah took it way over what he needed to um Vitelli Karpenko overdriving the turn oh off into the grass there's not a lot of grip out there and that's the end of the day for the 114 so he goes into the barriers and uh kind of puts himself out of his misery and uh, the rest of the field's misery Ryan Matthews slowly been working his way up through the field trying to make a move on Zelda Ashby for I believe this is 10th or 11th place uh, so Ryan Matthews uh, his team's kind of struggled this week Ben Atkins has been absolutely nowhere on pace and uh, Matthews I believe qualified in uh, the lower points but he's slowly been working his way through the field running right behind Ashby there uh, Zach Webster up in the points now he's been awful so far this year and this is the first weekend that he's actually looked pretty decent running with uh, Chris Davenport there and 17th, 18th place. He's outpacing his teammate right now, who uh, Craig Janser outqualified Webster yet again. Uh, but Fernando Costa up there in the points, right behind, looking very strong here. And Packer Carroll was right in front of this. I don't know if you saw that. This is a pretty good drive for Packer Carroll. He's up in 16th place, moving around Rossini there, who uh, I don't believe that's for position, but he's hunting down Cameron Taylor and Brandon LaRose up there, still having a strong run in 14th place. But Packer Carroll, this uh, essentially it's a one-car operation. This is the Gravity Lawrence team. Uh, but this car is essentially a one-car, two one-car operations. He's having a good run. And Cameron Taylor, a reminder, he started on the last row. He's up in 15th place. He's done a lot more uh, starting from the back row than uh, Luciano Savarol did. And that's up to 14th now, getting around uh, Brandon LaRoe there. So Cameron Taylor's put together an excellent drive as Scott Bates hunting down, I believe that's Chuck Johnson who's in 11th place. He's 
flown under the radar quite a bit today. I haven't talked about him at all, as, uh, yeah, Chuck Johnson just lets Bates go. Okay, uh, thought that was going to be a bit more of a battle. But uh, Scott Bates to P11. As Cameron Taylor, running up in 14th place, comes into the pits. That's a little early. This is lap 17 of 28. And uh, some cars, like Dan Lecklater, pit on lap 7 of uh, 28. So that might be a little bit on the edge of uh, the fuel range. Here's Greg Woodard running in 25th place with, uh, I believe that's uh, Craig Janser and Truman Ellison there, and uh, gonna get pushed wide by Rossini there. He tried to take an outside line, and that's three wide. Janser's weaving a bit back there, uh, but it looks like Woodard's gonna try and get around. He's up to 20th place now. Uh, that's This is uh, the battle for the final points paying position, it looks like, as uh, Truman Ellison, who was, uh, okay, 19th, yeah, this is the battle for the last few points positions. As Rossini continues to jam up the cars. Look at Richard Scott up there and Boris Tolmanov. They're going for the for the final points positions. Uh, did not expect to see those two cars up there. Ian Cooper trying to make moves. Uh, they're trying to get around uh, Rossini, who's just been jamming up the field. And uh, Kuznetsov uh, lapping Antonov there in the Semeltex car. Uh... Hanging with him just a little bit. Uh, and once he puts down the power, uh, the Toyati disappears. So, uh, the lack of power from Toyati is... Oh, oh my goodness. That is... Uh, <laughs> they're, they're slow. As uh, Kekkonen and uh, Devereaux now in this last little bit of... Uh, oh, they're not... They haven't come in for uh, fuel yet. Getting ready to... Yes... There it is. Uh, lap 18 of 28, they're coming into the pits. Uh, they sh they're gonna try and make this, uh, gonna try and make this work. A lot of cars coming in. There's Castaneda, Olenek was in. Here's Pliskin, who uh, is up in the top 10 right now. He's had a pretty strong run. Uh, takes out a cone there. Ryan Matthews coming in from 10th place. Uh, a lot of cars trying to make this last fuel run last 10 laps, which might be a bit of an ask, but I think they can get it done. Uh, some of these cars uh, did come in like lap 9 or so, so this 9 lap fuel runs, uh, 10 laps might be pushing it a bit, so this is going to be a fuel mileage race at the end, I think. Packer Carroll doing battle with uh, with Zach Webster there, that was for 14th place. Craig Janser and a lot of the, the midfielders also come in on lap 18. So Cameron Taylor and I believe it was Taylor, uh, there was one other car, and Costa also came in uh, a lap before these cars, and Kuznetsov waits one more lap and comes in on lap 19 of 28. Gonna see how they cycle out here. Here comes Kuznetsov out of the pits, and there's nobody around him. Still waiting. I think, yes, that's Kekin in there. That's a huge gap that Kuznetsov has built up. Props to his pit crew. That is insane uh, how much they've been able to give him. Devereaux in third. Olenek, Krikorian, and Dilks. Excellent run for John Dilks up in the top ten. Going to see who else is cycling around here. Um, got Kostyneta. There's Pliskin, Ashby, and Ryan Matthews. Tony Durbin, Scott Bates. That's Chuck Johnson there. Looking in the points, Chuck Johnson having a strong run. That's Packer Carroll, Zach Webster, and Fernando Costa still hanging in the points. Looks like Truman Ellison. There's, uh, I believe that was uh, the last of the points. Tom Moore has struggled all day. He's back in 36th place, and uh, I'm I'm not sure what the deal is. He's just had no pace whatsoever. And that's going to make a bad day even worse as he gets spun out by Lucas Grabert. Uh, Tom Moore is just just having an off week. As we go on board with Lucas Grabert, uh, we're going to see what happened here. Uh, Lucas Grabert has had a pretty decent season by his standards. And yeah, just Grabert didn't give him room. And uh, that's... Yeah, that's an appropriate uh, response by the officials. 
Uh, that was a little ridiculous. He didn't even give him room to to uh, come back on track. So Grabert gets the time penalty, and uh, I don't think he was going to be challenging for points anyways, but he certainly won't be today. Uh, Zelda Ashby looking very racy here, uh, running down Kurt Plisk, and I think she might get ninth here, and she's just going to power on by. Kurt Pliskin did not put up much of a fight at all. Expected a little more from him uh, as far as, uh, you know, he, he's more of a defensive driver than a lot of people give him credit for. And uh, here's Craig Janser in 32nd place being handily beaten by his teammate, uh, who he's usually gotten the one up on him, but uh, Janser's going to go up and smoke, and uh, that's going to be the end of the day for the 81 car. Uh, Webster might uh, want to check in with his crew to see if... Uh, Everything's looking fine with his engine. Cameron Taylor holds the last point spot right now in 20th place, right behind Truman Ellison. Ben Atkins did work his way into the points. I initially thought that that was uh, the Kathy Williams car, but uh, they, they look fairly similar. But Atkins up in 18th place. He's salvaged a pretty good run out of today. As uh, Liv Eklund and Saul Fischel, front row, back in 31st and 32nd. They've really, uh, their days have really not gone too well. As looks like... Uh, Woodard's going to power around Taylor and drop him out of the points. Uh, Brandon Leroux uh, had a very strong run earlier on. He was up in 14th, 15th place, but he slipped back to 25th. Uh, his day is kind of turned upside down. And uh, unfortunately, it, I don't think he's going to be in contention for a points finish. And uh, he's definitely not going to now as the engine goes up into a cloud of smoke. And uh, that's going to be the end of the day for Brandon Leroux, who, after a bit of confidence uh, from the Cariella Consolation race, uh, kind of returns back to Earth with a, uh, with a blown motor as he's going to soldier on back to the pits. John Dilks up to sixth place. Uh, he's uh, had a fantastic performance here today. This is the best run we've seen from the Team Timothy cars all season. And... Uh, I believe this is still last year's Gessler that they're running. Uh, gonna need some verification on that, but uh, Dilk's really punching above his weight here today. Uh, Fernando Costa could actually uh, score some championship points here today. He's running up in 16th place, and uh, like I said, this is more TV time than he's gotten uh, in any of the previous races combined, and this could really save his uh, Independence Trophy run, which has been nothing short of a disaster, uh, if he can hang on to this position. Uh, that'd be huge in the Independence Trophy standings. He doesn't have a whole lot of competition. Right now, that's led by Mason Yokoyama, if I'm not mistaken, who, uh, to be honest, didn't string together uh, a lot of very, very impressive performances, but... It's Independence Trophy cars there. They don't have quite the uh, support that some of these others do. Zach Webster running in 15th place right behind uh, right behind Chris Davenport. Actually, I believe he's in 17th. That's my mistake. Uh, the 1 and the 74 have started to close the gap on Kuznetsov, but they've got a long way to go, and they've got, uh, I believe, five or only five laps to do so. And... Uh, that might be a little bit too much of a gap to make up. Uh, Kuznetsov's pit crew did him wonders getting him way out in front. Yeah, that's a huge gap. Kuznetsov is at the first chicane right now as they're coming onto this long straightaway. So uh, Kuznetsov might just have this one in the bag, but Kekkonen and Devereaux are, are, are a bit faster. So they, they will reel him in, but I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that they're going to have a chance to get around him. Uh, Kuznetsov backing it down to try and save fuel, even though he did pit a lap later than everyone else. Here's Ingrid Hadeland, 23rd place. That extra pit stop really d is uh, coming back to haunt her as she runs right in front of Dan Lechleiter. who's had a pretty strong performance today, all things considered. Uh, but Hadeland, what could have been if she didn't have that tire go down? As, uh, yeah, Lechleiter, wow, that's a, that's a power move by Lechleiter pulling alongside of her. Uh, he might be able to get the position here. I don't think so. The Tenere doesn't quite have the power that the Gessler does on the long straightaway, so he's going to slot back in line and hang in 24th right now. But Hadeland, what could have been if she didn't have that right rear tire? 
uh, go down. She had pulled quite a bit of a gap over Kuznetsov, but uh, I think Lechleiter is going to abandon trying to make it on fuel. He did come in fairly early. Uh, five laps to go, and yeah, he's going to pull into the pits and uh, just, just not try and risk it like he did uh, in the Karyala race, in the uh, Karyala uh, Constellation race. And uh, Tony Durbin uh, really has upped at this split. He's up in eighth place and uh, trying to figure out if Kuznetsov can make it. And it sounds like Kuznetsov will be able to make it. Uh, Kuznetsov did stay out one extra lap and uh, doing battle with Marco Diaz Castaneda there is uh, Tony Durbin in eighth place. So Tony Durbin really punching above his weight and uh, I guess he didn't feel too confident about his pit strategy. So uh, Tony Durbin comes in with uh, with four laps to go and uh, abandoning fuel saving to try and just uh, might try to steal some points from people who decide to run out of who try and stretch it and run out of fuel as Ryan Matthews up in the top 10. He's uh, slowly gotten faster throughout this race and uh, looks set for a pretty decent result. But Zelda Ashby, who's looked really racy this, uh, this event, is uh, really putting a lot of pressure on him. Might be able to, um, might be able to make a move as uh, Kuznetsov's lap times have been dropping off. I think Kuznetsov's enter entered uh, fuel saving mode to try and make it and uh, we're going to see how that looks with uh, four laps to go. There goes Kuznetsov. And, uh, oh yeah, they've definitely closed the gap. Uh, it, it might be a bit of a stretch uh, for them to catch him at this point still, but I think that, uh, oh, that, that two laps to go and that gap's not looking great, especially with, uh, that's a lapped car in front. That's, uh, I believe, that, yeah, that's Rossini. So Kuznetsov might try and use the draft. He has picked it up. He has gained about two seconds from uh, his fuel saving, so his crew has told him that he is good to go to the end. And uh, he's going to need all the pace that he can get because they, uh, Kekkonen and Devereaux have definitely closed that gap a lot more than we've expected. Checking back in with Tony Durbin and uh, coming out of the pits, it looks like he still might hang on to the points. He's uh, in a battle for 19th right now with Truman Ellison and Ian Cooper who uh, they've really uh, battled back from a pretty poor qualifying effort uh, to possibly get into the points here. So Tony Durbin uh, holding on right now. Ian Cooper, they're going to take 20th from Truman Ellison, but Ellison's going to take it right back and move up to 19th. So Tony Durbin hangs on to the last points position right now. And uh, Ian Cooper, they're going to make a move. Uh, might be able to make that work on the outside, but I don't think so. Uh, but they've got a better line going into this, uh, into this long hairpin. And, yep, there goes, uh, Cooper to 20th. So Durbin is now outside the points. Kekkonen really putting down the power now. Pulled away from Devereaux and, uh, used some of the draft from Rossini. And looks like, uh, this is, this is going to be coming to one lap to go. Wait, they're going to get the white flag. But Kekkonen has really started to put the power down and put some of the pressure on Kuznetsov. And he's almost within drafting distance of Kuznetsov. So uh, this, I think Kuznetsov backed it down a little bit more than uh, he was hoping. Or uh, Kekkonen really putting the, putting the pressure on Kuznetsov as they come around. So Kekkonen has now caught Kuznetsov. But Kuznetsov, he's been so desperate for a win these past few years. Doesn't have a win yet. He's going to do everything that he can to try and hold him off as they take the white flag. Like I said, Kekkonen's caught him, but it's another thing to try and pass Kuznetsov. Home crowd is going crazy right now as Kuznetsov trying to hold off Kekkonen. Kekkonen closing the gap. That's about a one car length gap right now. And uh, Kuznetsov, the, the Gesslers seem to have a bit more power than the Sars on the straightaway, so it might be a little hairy for Kuznetsov coming onto this long straightaway. He pulls a bit of a gap coming out of turn exit and going into the chicanes. Kuznetsov still ahead, opens it up to a car length and a half, two car lengths now. As Kuznetsov comes through that second chicane, coming through that sh second chicane now. Oh, he got that a little bit wrong 
and that gap's gonna close down half a car length now. Maybe, maybe a car length, car length and a half. As uh, Kuznetsov at the end of the long straightaway still holds the lead, but gets on the brakes a little early as Kekkonen closes that down to half a car length. Takes a peek to the inside, but Kuznetsov's gonna hang on to it. Kuznetsov hanging on for dear life as Kekkonen assaults. Trying to hang on. Kuznetsov, victory is in sight for Yevgeny Kuznetsov, but Arto Kekkonen, who's left so many points on the table so far this year, trying to steal one away from the hometown hero. He's gonna pull to the inside. Side by side, coming to the front straight away. Side by side, Kekkonen trying to get the side draft there. But it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Yevgeny Kuznetsov wins it. Yevgeny Kuznetsov wins in front of the hometown crowd. First Master Cup Series win for Yevgeny Kuznetsov as Cameron Taylor and Chuck Johnson run out of fuel on the last lap. Johnson there stops as Cameron Taylor runs out immediately afterwards. But after so long... And so many attempts, Yevgeny Kuznetsov takes his first win in what's going to be a very popular victory, I think. Kekkonen and Devereaux rounded out the podium, and they did close quite a bit on Kuznetsov, but it just wasn't enough. Olenek and Krikorian for Hodges Walter Racing, fourth and fifth, great runs from them. And John Dilks, round of applause to him for a strong sixth place showing for Team Timothy, their best performance of the season. Marco Diaz Castaneda flew under the radar all day, but managed to come home seventh place. Great run for him. Zelda Ashby, eighth place, looked very racy all day, and Ryan Matthews salvages a ninth place out of it. Kurt Pliskin rounds out the top ten in a good performance for Power Steering Incorporated. Scott Bates, eleventh in the sixth car. Not much, doesn't call himself much of a road racer, but ended up in eleventh place. Good run for him. Packer Carroll, P12, great run for the Lawrence Gravity team. Greg Woodard, P13. After starting pretty deep in the field, Zach Webster, great recovery for him as well. First race that he's really looked pretty strong in that car. Ian Cooper, they finish in 15th place. After uh, the, the lower points got a bit shuffled with people running out of fuel at the end. So we have some interesting names here. Chris Davenport in 16th. Truman Ellison brings home six points for Scuderia Tutino in 17th place. Ingrid Hadeland. Uh, her race kind of got derailed by that flat tire early on, but she still manages to bring it home in 18th and salvages four points. Tony Durbin, P19, ran much better than that uh, throughout the race, uh, despite abandoning his pit strategy. And Boris Tolbanov brings it home for Rus Autosport, the first Moldovan driver and the first Moldovan with a point in the TM Master Cup Series. Now taking a look at the point standings, the top four hasn't changed much with only Saul Fischl and Chris Davenport scoring points out of all of them. Pliskin jumps up to 5th place from 6th into the top 5 now. Adrian Devereaux moves up to 6th. Castaneda moves up, and Ingrid Highland dropped from 5th to 8th in the standings. Cameron Taylor didn't gain any points today. Joe Olenek up to 10th. Yevgeny Kuznetsov, the biggest mover, up to 13th from 20th. Atkins dropped the most from 10th to 16th. And, Op and uh, Oppo Anselmi still up there in 19th after a strong uh, Cariola run, didn't score any points today. But Yuho Kivla is the only driver to drop out of the top 20, replaced by Scott Bates. And finally, taking a look at the Independence Trophy standings, Mason Yokoyama continues to lead after all four of this group's Independence Trophy uh, entries were unable to gain any ground on the first group, putting them 5th through 8th. That's all for this week. The next round of the championship is the round of Wales at the Launch Energy Motor Park for the ninth round of the championship. I would like to personally thank Syzygy for being the guest commentator for this episode of the show. It really, really meant a lot to me that he agreed to do this episode of the show, especially since he's been following this channel since 2006. Since he was so gracious, why don't you return the favor to him by showing him a bit of love? He's got a channel over here, and he's got some neat stuff on it. Check it out and subscribe to him.